What's up, everybody? Hey, Jack. Hey, Saul. You guys hear me okay? Let me know if the audio and uh, <clears throat> the lighting look okay. And what's happening? I get a yeah. Audio is good. Perfect. Okay, well, thanks for uh, thanks for jumping on. Looks like we got a couple people here. We are going to be looking at uh, the GMMK Pro today, and uh, this is. Uh, this is that 60% that I built last stream, although I did add uh, silent switches. So the silent switches from my previous video are still in this one, and uh, I, I really, really like them. So I'll probably keep them for a little while. But... All right. Well, I guess we could just jump on into it. I got, um, so with this, with this stream, I'm kind of, curious to get people's thoughts hey Tristan so I have a few different switches to try I have the board itself um, I kind of want to give it a go just like completely stock like right out of the box and then I also have uh, the polycarbonate plate to play around with as well so we got a few things to fiddle with this evening so be sure to stick around um, as a disclo I get well disclosure or not I did open this already because I want to or I had to get some of the initial like a roll and B roll for the unboxing for when I actually make a video about the uh, GMMK pro but um, apart from that I haven't really played around with it I think I plugged in a switch once or twice just to kind of see uh, what initial thoughts would be but um, this is as bare bones as it gets so I've put it all back in the, the packaging here just so that you're able to sort of see what you'll get uh, out of the box. But um, another quick disclaimer too is I paid for this. I also paid for the plate myself. GMMK didn't send this to me or anything like that. So um, my opinions about this will kind of be my own. All right. Sean Jones and Tristan Jones. Look at that. So, I mean, the the unboxing is a lot nicer than uh, than the uh, GMMK TKL that I did back in June or July. Um, but this is sort of their premium offering, so it makes sense. So I'll unbox that in a second. But here, like, it's pretty standard fare. You get a cable, you get the... Um, keycap puller as well as the switch puller now the keycap puller isn't great i obviously this is this is the same one that they use for all of their other um products so i understand why they've included it here but definitely if you're going to be getting something like this i'd suggest getting a uh, wire keycap puller like the one here they're just a little bit nicer on your switches I'm not going to scratch as much because they get under the switch rather than uh rather than grabbing the sides like this one will And then you get a couple stickers and then uh, some extra gaskets. So I'll keep these out just in case we need to use them, but um, that's kind of a nice thing. Is it as heavy as they say it is? Um, I'm not sure. What does it say on the box? One second, let's take a look. Does it even say? Okay, so it says it's approximately three and a half pounds. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that that weight is um, un, unbuilt without any keycaps, without any switches. Let me go grab my scale and we can confirm that. So give me two seconds here. All right. 
So here we go. Here's the board in all of its glory. Ha, I see what I did there. All right, let's do a weight check because I'm also curious. I'll put this in pounds. So three and a half pounds is the met is the number that they say. And if we weigh this now, we get 3.18. So it's a little bit lighter than what the box says, according to my scale. So, I mean, I could try a different scale, but I, I mean, it's in the ballpark. So not super, super heavy. Like to give you an idea, this is a 60% aluminum case with a stainless steel weight. And if we put this on, it's about the same. So unbuilt and fully built 60 is about the same weight or close enough anyway. Come on, there we go. But I mean, I, I do like the aesthetic. It's very, I like how the edges have been machined like the it's quite sharp you know a lot of i mean the the uh 75 keyboard that comes to mind right away is the idobau id80 and the id80 is very curved but um, i like this design language a little bit better like the angles are much more striking in my opinion and the typing angle is i think about the same it's not a super thick front which is nice too so i don't i probably wouldn't use this with a with a wrist rest excuse me but really clean. Yeah, it is pretty clean. So, and of course this knob, it's kind of a nice touch. So I got two, I got some thoughts here. Either I can, I, I've been thinking about building it completely stock, just out of the box, throw some switches in it and get going just to see what it would be like for somebody to just pick up and literally plug and play this. But um, I think I'm going to start that way and just kind of get an idea of what, you know, some of the stabilizers are going to feel like and that sort of thing. And then once I am done that, we can fiddle around with the stabs, open it up, that sort of thing. So, but yeah, I mean, the machining is pretty nice, I think. They did, they definitely did a good job with the quality control. All right. So for this build or for this stream, I have a PBT notion from novel keys to put on. So excuse all the dog hair, but um, I think I wanted to put a bright sort of set on on this because you know being a silver um, being a silver keyboard, I wanted something a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter. So hey Tenzin, um, one thing to note though that is kind of cheesy that you know the the GMMK marketing for this board was white ice. They called this white ice. And, or they still do call it white ice. And I think that was a bit of a misconception because a lot of people were like, oh, this is gonna be an all white keyboard. And of course it's silver. So I bought this um, because I wanted white keyboard. <laughs> and obviously that's not the case. It looks nice, um, but I feel like maybe the uh, claim that white, that, like the white ice as a name was a bit of a mis miscue. Say So here's PBT Notion. The legends are all purple, which is kind of cool. And uh, they have some really fun novelty and accent colors that we can play around with and, and put on here as well. So. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna get the modifiers so we can test how these 
stabilizers kind of feel stock. Looking at it off the top, you can sort of see there, there's definitely been some sort of lube applied, but like if you look at the, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up or not, but if you look at the where the wire is, you just see that big old dollop of lube like that's not going to be doing much. So it looks like it's just kind of your run of the mill factory, like machine shop lubricated thing. So, I mean, obviously if you do it yourself, you're going to get a much better sound, but I am curious to see how these feel right out of the gate. Okay. And for switches today, I got two options for the chat. These are seal switches by uh, Minterly. These are like an Alpaca V2 uh, housing, but a 78 gram spring. I've tuned these completely. So they have uh, been lubed with uh, 205 grade zero and filmed. And then these I picked up a couple days ago and these are um, box, box, what is it? Box navies. So they are loud as all hell. So I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the the uh, linears to test these uh, modifiers just so I can hear things a little bit better, but um, I'm kind of curious to hear <laughs> to to put all of these uh, navies in because I haven't liked a clicky switch, but this legit feels like typing on a typewriter. I feel like so we'll play around with it. All right. GMMK Pro with a clicky switch sounds interesting. Yeah. Definitely has potential to be interesting. Oh, I need enter and backspace. So I got a feeling the space bar is gonna be the worst because it's the widest key, but we shall see. Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. So let me uh, let me move my microphone down and we can get a quick audio check on how the stabilizers sound right out of the gate. But uh, backspace doesn't feel too bad. Space bar definitely needs some work though. So here you go. Yeah, um, the space bar is not great, <laughs> but the uh, the rest of the board. I mean, the the backspace is. I'm I'm surprised. I, that just could be the fact that um, <laughs> they're smaller and a little bit easier to loop. But also, apologies if you can hear my dog. She definitely thinks we're under attack right now. <laughs> All right. Let's open this bad boy up.
So I think, yeah, this just, this knob just comes straight off and it's got a plastic back and a metal casing, which is pretty nice. And then if we flip her over, I know there are a ton of screws to unscrew on this thing based on some of the videos that I've seen already. So time to get going. Just bear with me here. I'm gonna put out a quick bat signal. <laughs> hey, Yusuf. No worries about being late. Everybody's got their laughs. Better late than never. I once heard box jades in my local library. I was bamboozled since the only person I know that builds, I, you're the only person you know who builds mechs. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, I mean, I don't really like clicky switches. So, but that's mostly because I find them very loud and not really conducive to a, a shared work environment, which I am currently in, but you know, to each their own. Also, I feel like clicky switches are just not great for um, streaming or playing games with your friends because all they're gonna hear is your, your clacking. But that's just me. Have you guys watched any of the, uh, any other YouTubers uh, review of the GMMK Pro yet? Oh God, come on screw. Wow, E1, five bucks. Thank you very much. You are the first person who's ever donated to my channel. You're in a lecture right now, so you can't stick around. Oh, have, uh, have a good lecture. That's a, well, I don't know what area of the world you're in, but for me, that's a late night lecture. Hi, Jack. <laughs> well, I only I got I, I hit monetization on the YouTube channel maybe a month ago or maybe two months ago at this point. What is time? Four thirty to seven PM. Oh, okay, I guess I had some lectures like that when I was back in college. I think I had a six thirty to nine thirty one on Wednesdays at one point. That was brutal. Yeah, Bad Seed Tex Saul was super thorough. I really appreciated it. He was the he's the reason why I didn't buy a brass plate. I just bought the uh, polycarp. Not uh, not to mention, I think the brass plate was like forty US, which is a lot of money. Thoughts on the GMMK Pro so far? Um, I like. I really like the design language. Like the edges are really nice. Um, I'm sure this LED will look really good once I've plugged it, plugged everything in. And just generally, the board seems very well put together. So um, I'm, uh, I'm approaching this from, a, from the perspective of somebody who would be 
like not a full enthusiast, you know, dropping tons of cash on on keyboards, but more like the comparables for this would be like the Ido Bow ID80, maybe even the um, the drop control or the drop alt. And the reason I say the drops, even though they're different types of keyboards, um, is that they're kind of in that same price range, right? So, and and sort of that entry to the custom scene. So, so there's the top. You can kind of see the gaskets underneath, which is nice. This is also my first ever gasket mounted board. So everything that I've been using um, thus far has been either top mount or integrated plate. Put that there, I guess. All right. What parts am I planning on using? Well, it could be dealer's choice, depending on the stream. Um, I have, let me see, where are they? I have one set of Zeal screw-in stabilizers, which with no wire. So I'm probably gonna use the wire from um, the space bar here and swap out the space bar because from what I've heard, that's the, the most egregious uh, error, <laughs> but uh, we shall see. I might try and tune them as well just to see what I can do with them. But uh, I'm using PBT Notion for the keycaps, and then I'm also going to be either using um, the seal switches by Minterly. So these are a 78 gram linear that I've uh, lubed and filmed, or we also have box navies if uh, you want your eardrums blown out. <laughs> um, Victor, I haven't typed on it yet, so I don't know if it's still too compressy or not. Um, yeah, I don't like from what I've heard about the gasket mounts. It's it. This isn't like your perfect gasket mounting experience because there's so many screws that sort of keep it very rigid. But uh, I don't have an opinion yet, so we shall see. Oh yeah. Oh, so there's a daughter board. Okay. Be careful when you're opening up your own because there's definitely a uh, <laughs> a cable, but here's what the PCB looks like. Oh, you know what's interesting is the, you know, normally in my experience, like when you buy a hot swap board, they, uh, the, the hot swaps are kale. But if you look closely, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. They say glorious on them. It's a little bit tough to see on the on the uh, video, but it's kind of neat. Where did you come from? This foam feels kind of decent. It's not very dense. Can I comment on the quality of the solders on the hot swap? Um, I mean, have a look for yourself. They don't, they seem pretty standard as compared to the other hot swap boards I've seen or hot swappable PCBs. Um, it doesn't look any, any different than what I've seen before. So seems fine. Seems a-okay. denser foam better um the i wish so the maha or the maja i mean right behind me i i'm not going to open it up on stream today but the foam on that it wasn't necessarily denser but it just seemed to be a little bit better built like um it had kind of a different coating on one side that was easier to play around with or easier to to move but um i think in my experience i would say a denser foam is probably a little bit better because it's going to um reduce the sound the ping more but it's also going to reduce everything a little bit more right so so if you're looking for something that can really elevate the the uh, sound profile of the keyboard i don't think it's going to do that but god i'm running out of space
Yeah, Victor, I mean, I just opened, I just have opened this up, so I don't really have much commentary on the board itself yet. I gotta, I gotta continue to fiddle with it first. There are uh, a lot of screws on this, though. So I can see why some people were complaining that this was so st super stiff, even despite being a gasket mount, just because <laughs> when you have this many screws in place, it's going to hold everything together really good. So I'm actually doing a budget build on the Keychron K8 in a couple of days. Parts are settled. Do I have any tips? Nice. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of parts are you getting? And no worries, Victor. I mean, I'm I'm pretty stoked on giving this a try too, right? Like I've I've been waiting, like everybody else, about on on this board, and I think it's co so far my impressions are pretty good, um, but. I haven't typed on it yet, so what did I I'm trying to keep all of the same screws together because there some of them are different. Yeah, Jack. Um, my only recommendation for the Keychron um, is to get the stabilizers on it tuned up because just like any board. Um, pre-built kind of right out of the box the the stabilizers aren't amazing and if you have the money in your budget for it uh getting the uh getting the genuine cherry stabilizers will, will make a difference um but apart from that like switches are gator on milky yellows lube with 205 grade zero springs bag looped with 105 and filmed with desk keys wow yeah you went deep And uh, are you are you using the um, just the stock keycaps on it, or are you gonna get different ones for those? It's funny. A friend of mine just built a Keychron K8 as well, and like did a full swap. I think he put Zelios in it, and uh, last I heard, he was very happy. So. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, like I said, yeah, the only big recommendation I would provide you, for you there, Jack, would be to um, make sure that the stabilizers are all nice and tuned. Everglide Panda plate mounts. Holy mod. Interest yeah, everybody's talking about the holy mod these days. I, I actually haven't watched any videos about it yet just because life has gotten in the way. But uh, I would be curious to try the Holy Mod at some point. HK Gaming Chalk. Yeah, that's a good looking set for, for a pretty affordable price too. That's not talked about enough, I don't think. Is like, what's a good set that doesn't completely break the bank? Okay, I think we're almost done opening this thing up. There, were, there were a lot of screws. This is crazy. Zelios are pretty ballin', but I can't seem to let go of black ink V twos. Do I have a switch that? Are, uh, good question. Um, do I have a favorite switch? Um, Telios are, were currently my favorites for a really long time. Hey, thanks for stopping by Jack. Hopefully, uh, good luck with your build. That sounds pretty cool. Um, Telios are, I think were my favorite. That's what's built in my, in my Majo. 
But uh, lately I've been using this board pretty exclusively and I have the Gazoo Boba Gums that I recently um, added uh, 70 gram springs to. And that's really great. And mostly because I have a, a girlfriend who will work different, like odd hours sometimes. And um, having quiet, really quiet switches to work with or to use when other people in my house are sleeping is, is really nice. And adding the um, adding the spring to be a little bit heavier really reduced some of the some of my initial complaints about it which was just that it's too mushy so kind of a cop-out answer of saying not really anymore <laughs> but I, I just like trying switches I just like fiddling around and playing with new ones so we did it we took the PCB apart or the top plate apart yeah, that is crazy. And so the, oh, make sure we don't lose these either. But yeah, so here we are. Here's the foam. I think I'm going to keep the foam in. I've heard some people take it out, keep it in, um, but I'm going to keep the foam in for this build, but I am going to switch it over to the polycarbonate plate right away because uh, I'm very curious about the polycarb plate and um, and uh, yeah we'll go from there but first let's take a look at the stabilizers is the PCB foam still glued on no nope, I don't think so no nope. oh there's a little there's a little piece at the very hold on best to show best to show one second so it feels like there's a little bit of tack or something right here yeah, you can kind of see it there. So hopefully mm. that seemed to be the only spot right there. So go figure, but that'll that'll rub off e easily. Pretty stiff, like yeah, this thing this thing doesn't flex too much for just being a plate, so. All right, let's put that aside for now. Let's put the foam aside for now because we'll use that later. Put the knife away and let us look at the PCB. So yeah, if you look at the stabilizers again, like they're, these weren't, uh, these weren't lubed that great, but again, not unsurprising for a pre-built to have kind of a poor lube job. So I think I, oh yeah, I took the stabilizer, I took these out already. So what do we got? I mean, A for effort, I guess, props for trying, but it's not that great. <laughs> Getting some of my things together for Oops. Lubin. Germophobic, what's up? Uh, am I gonna use different stabs? Uh, I'm gonna use the one set of zeal stabs I have left for the space bar, and then I'm going to keep the goat stabs for the modifiers. Uh, Roger, hey, yes, these are the goat stabs. They come stock with the um, GMMK. So I'm actually going to grab a quick 
a little bit of paper towel here because these are really greasy. So bear with me here two seconds and I will be right back. All right, let's open these guys up. Does the Maha use only two U stabs? Yeah, or Maja. I keep saying Maha, even though I know. Uh, yes, it only uses two U stabs. So uh, in total, it uses one, two, three, five, five of them. Because bot zeal stabs, yes. So you will need, I think they have, a, you'll need five two U stabs for that for that board. Which is kind of annoying, but. Where's my little picker? So. Here we go. Here's the the actual stem of the stabilizer, the goat stab. It's actually like it's clipped. It's completely flat on the bottom, which is, you know, good. But I don't know, you know, there's been a lot of comments online about how these can't really be tuned that well. So I'm, I'm curious as to why. Um, like I said, I'm going to swap this out for a zeal stab on the space bar anyway. But um, curious if we can get these, uh, these modifiers to sound good. So... But first things first, clean everything off. I've also been using these um, these upgrade, like basically rubberized Band-Aid mods for, for my stabilizers as well. And I found these to be quite nice. They mute the sound a little bit more, but um, I think it makes it a lot smoother, a lot nicer on the bottom out. So I'm going to put these on here as well is the wheel on the gmmk pro a multimedia tool i believe you can configure it to be as such germophobic um i haven't plugged this in yet so i haven't like i don't have direct experience with it yet this is this is uh quite literally a first impressions live look at this for me as well as you potentially So I will tell you once we get to the point of me plugging it in. It looks like a nice board. It does. It. I mean, I think it looks great. I think the, um, oops, I think GMMK did a really good job with, with the appearance of it for sure. going to be problematic. For those who have just joined, welcome, welcome. I am uh, fiddling with the GMMK Pro tonight. We're going to see if it's lived up to the hype or the controversy. This one also feels like I need to wipe it again.
All right. Just making sure I don't have any other stabs kicking around that I have since forgot about. Does not look like it though. All right. I just finished doing the first part of my build, which was lubing and filming 60 Telios turquoise switches. Is the actuation force the only difference between that and the normal V2s? Um, you're going to have to remind me what the, uh, uh, the Telios turquoise's actuation is because I don't actually remember off the top of my head. But I also believe Telios have a few different uh, 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 versions you can buy. So... The ones that I have are 67 grams, if that makes sense. But I don't have the uh, turquoise version. 63 and a 63.5. Okay, yeah. So maybe um, like mine are mine are 67s, and um, I th I knew you could get that variant as well. So apart apart from the coloring the colorway, I think it's the same uh, the same switch. Or sorry, yeah, the same switch. Oh, you saw my build. It's one cent more expensive than the V2s. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a cool color. It's a cool color that you're never going to see that often because you put keycaps on it. So, hey, I appreciate that. It is, uh, it is probably my favorite keyboard. How do I get which colors? The, the colors on the Maja? Um, it's just the forest green color that they had for sale. I picked mine up, um, at the end of December or like right around Black Friday and end of November. So they might not have had the green for sale again the second time they, they had it for sale. But, um, yeah, I just, I liked the green. I thought it was a cool color. It was for me. It was either the, uh, between the green or the polycarbonate version, and I said, ah, "Let's go with green." Yeah, that could have just been that they didn't have the stock for it. See, I, e white would have been nice too. E white looked like I, I'm a sucker for a, a white board, but alas, wasn't it more expensive? Wasn't the white more expensive? because they have to do a different type of coating for it in order to get it to that color. Ooh. <laughs> I guess 329, 359, so it's an extra $30 US. Yeah, anything anything white on on an on an aluminum board is extra because, uh, as I understand it, it's the way that the color is made. Like, you can't you can't anodize it to be white like that. Oh, you don't have it yet. Shipping out in two days. Well, I hope it comes soon, and I hope you don't have the problems that I had with mine. Yeah, the blemishes. Like, I, there was another comment on that uh, on that video a few days ago, where uh, another another viewer had just recently bought a Maja and had the same problems that I did, where the QC was sus. Oh, okay. Thanks for putting two and two together, there, germophobic. I'm always pretty generous when I coat the stabilizer or the uh, the bar of the stabilizer because that has always been the cop the culprit for me. 
for crappy sounding stabilizers. Do I lube top housing? I don't lube the top housing. Oops. I don't see the need. Yeah, I don't I don't think the top housing like there's minimal contact and the in my opinion the most important parts are where plastic is touching plastic like constantly, which would be the stem, the rail, that sort of thing. Took you 9 hours to lube 68 keys. Uh the more you do, the faster it's going to be. That's the only tip I can really offer. It's uh Definitely be meticulous and careful the first time you do it because uh, that it's, it's a learning process. But um, yeah, the first time I lubed switches, it took me forever too. It's not a not uncommon. I don't own a station either. I mean, one way that I've sort of improved my my lubing <laughs> is um, I'll lube like 10 bottom housings in a row first, and then I will lube um, like or then I'll put the springs that I've bagged lubed into the into the bottom housings and then I'll lube 10, 10 stems. And that way it's just like you're always going in groups of 10, which can make it go faster. Like I lubed these all on Sunday and there's uh, enough for a GMMK Pro. So just under 90. And I think it took me two and a half hours maybe. Okay, so let's see if there's any. Boop, 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 boop. Looks good. All right, let's pull the goat stabs. God, they're so greasy. <laughs> when am I going to do a solder, a uh, solder board? Uh, when I learn how to solder. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't have any plans yet, Tristan. Um, although there's a, a local, a local uh, seller sells a really cool looking 3D printed 75%. And the PCB he uses for that board is all uh, solder only. So I'd give it a go. I just, I really like the idea of hot swap because it gives you such flexibility in changing up the switches if you don't like them or, or if you get bored or, or want, want to play around with something new. But I guess I have so many damn keyboards now. I, I can just <laughs> use a keyboard that has, has a hot swap rather than a solder. So... When you bag lube the springs, do they feel? Yeah, I think that's the point of bag lubing. Is <laughs> they they they're coating the whole spring, right? So, yeah, they're gonna come out greasy for sure. You agree with the hot, yeah I I like I've had my fair share of issues with hot swap like as well where like the the socket has gotten loose, but 
I think, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great way to, uh, test and fiddle and try things like now that I know what I do now, like I'd probably would have bought the Maja with a soldered board, uh, because I just know that I'm never going to swap those Telios out from it. But, um, for things like this 60%, like I love the fact that I have a hot swappable board or a PCV in that 60 because I can just try whatever the heck I want now, uh, which is great. KBDology, I'm not sure what that says, but thanks for jumping on. I am not Korean, unfortunately. Yeah, you had to force yourself to force yourself to learn how to solder because you had to fix your your ducky. Oh no, what happened? Ooh, 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 ooh. I look like a Korean. <laughs> You have no idea, you have no idea how often I have gotten that before. Who says that? Other Asian people say that. Oh, you had a broken space bar stabilizer. Oh, gotcha. It's funny, funny story. When I was in South, like I, a few years ago. Yeah, Ryu. <laughs> I think Blue Jays are playing tonight. George Springer is starting for the first time since I think he got on board. So that's exciting. Um, it's funny because I went to, I traveled Southeast Asia a, f a number of years ago with some friends and I got, I got Korean all the time, which, uh, which was hilarious. But I guess that's just, that's just the build. I don't know. Hey, Joe. Hey, from Moscow. 4 a.m. in Moscow. My goodness. Go back to bed, dude. I can't be that interesting. <laughs> All right, so right now I am just cleaning out these goat stabs. Um, they were lubricated pretty heavily, but like just like dumped on in one spot and not enough in another. So I'm just cleaning them all off right now, and then I'm going to reapply the uh, the lube with some Crytox. in bed already <laughs> this is now an ASMR channel for for Joe so he can go to sleep all right thanks for thanks for the questions and hanging out, germaphobic. Best of luck with uh, when your Maja comes in. Hey, thanks. Okay. God, they used so much lube.
So for those in the chat, I got a question for you. I think, you know, realistically, I could probably do a stream maybe once a month. It's kind of my thoughts. What what would be the general preference or or for those who are in the chat? Like, do you when you look for streams, are you typically going to Twitch or are you happy with YouTube streams when they come on? I'm just curious to see what the general sentiment might be because I do have a Twitch channel, um, but I have never used it. And pretty much everything that I've done for keyboard related stuff has been on YouTube. So curious to know your thoughts if you have any. YouTube is fine. Well, with that sample size of one, <laughs> we'll stay on YouTube. Yeah, I'm not like, okay. Like, thanks for the feedback, guys. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know what monetization really looks like yet for me. Um, I mean, I hit I hit the threshold a couple months ago, so there are now ads running on my videos. But like, you know, this has always just been a hobby for me first and foremost. So I'll have to think about it a little bit more in terms of like what I can do. You prefer YouTube, personally not. Okay, good to know. I just know like a lot of the bigger keyboard streamers, keyboard builders are on Twitch primarily and YouTube secondarily, but just generally, just genuine, what's the, generally, there's the word, curious to see what your thoughts are. But And Dano, hey, nice to see you. Part of the other reason why I'm hesitant about like, you know, setting up like memberships and things like that for this YouTube channel is for one, I'm pretty, st I'm pretty small <laughs> still. Like, you know, I think I hit just over 1200 subscribers right now as we, as we're, as we're talking. And um, I also have a full-time job. So like, I don't want to commit to saying, Hey, if you're a member, you're going to get a, you're going to get all of this stuff and I'm going to, you know, run a discord server and all that jazz but uh i uh don't really have time like i have barely enough time to put two videos out a month you know what i mean so plus the weather's getting nicer and being outside and hanging out with friend being outside is the only <laughs> real way to uh see your friends and family right now so uh good to see you too dano um we have two options for switches we got uh, Minterly's or seal switches by Minterly or uh, Box Royal or what are these? Box Navies. <laughs> have I ever uh, sp uh, speed <laughs> have I ever done a speed run for a keyboard build? No, I have not. I am a bit I'm not good enough at building keyboards yet to <laughs> consider speed runs. <laughs> like I'd rather be meticulous and do it right then uh then try and like ham my way through a build because i think there's just way more opportunity for things to go wrong if i were to do that do something like that what do i think about dcs caps um i'm not familiar what are dcs caps let me let's refresh my crappy memory So 
So you're talking about uh, something like this? Oh, I lost the chat, <laughs> of course. Let's see, what does this Reddit post say? Oh, get out of here. I've never heard of DCS caps, if I'm being totally honest with you. I mean, they, they kind of just look like Cherry or OEM profile. So, um, yeah, no, I, I don't necessarily have an opinion, but that's kind of cool. Oop, there we go. My video about the ID80 got you into buying. Uh, hey, happy to happy to get you into this hobby. I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate that. That was my gateway drug too. Was the ID80? So, um, it's a night. I mean, for all of the criticism it gets from time to time, I, I still have a soft spot for it. What's my Grail keyboard? Um, Kiko's Lab, the KL90, is one that I had my eye on for quite a while, and it looks it looks insane. Like it's it's basically kind of like a Satisfaction 75 with the rotary encoders, but you had the option to put either two encoders on it, or you had the option to uh, have like a little OLED on the other side. And I thought that was such an awesome implementation of of um, that sort of a that sort of a keyboard. So I believe they're doing a polycarbonate version pretty soon. So um, I would I'm definitely interested in in something like that. But um, in terms of like a Grail keyboard, like uh, you know the meme end game is a end game is a myth, end game is a lie. Like I think part of the reason why this this hobby is so interesting for a lot of people is there's so much there's so much um variety right there's so much to try and so much to play around with so i don't necessarily have like an end game in the sense where i'm just gonna stop but cajun canuck what's up buddy you've got everything ready for the pro build except the board yeah that sucks um so far, it's going well. There, you missed me um, taking this apart, and holy crap, there are a lot of screws. But like the PCB seems nice. Yeah, it's def the ID80 is definitely not as hollow as people say. I think the biggest criticism on it is the fact that it's got like an integrated plate and i didn't really know that what it what a non-integrated plate would be like um because i hadn't tried one when i did the id80 review and now that i've had one um it's definitely stiffer but it's still a great keyboard and like for the for the price it's 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 hard to it's hard to say no like i'm very curious to see uh, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen in the future with the ID80 now that the GMMK Pro is out because I feel like the GMMK Pro is the direct competitor to an ID80. And so far, I like the GMMK Pro more because it just it's it's it, it feels much better built. Oh, you got the poly plate too? Yeah, I have the poly plate as well. That's what we're going to put on after I'm done fixing these stabilizers what's more fun for me building a keyboard or a pc um good question i really like building computers <laughs> building computers is so much fun like you know uh, one of the reasons why i built this or i put i started this youtube channel was because i wanted it this to be a tech channel kind of like uh, not necessarily the Linus Tech tip, Tips type thing, but like I don't know if you guys have heard of Paul's Hardware or Optimum Tech. Those those YouTube channels I really like. And building a PC, it's just it is literally adult Lego, and I love it for that. But I mean, 
I'm sure everybody or you know everybody in this chat has been seeing the prices of GPUs and CPUs lately, right? It's just it's it's not viable right now for me to like uh, reach out to companies to see if they want to sponsor a video or something like that. Um, keyboards is a little bit more accessible in that regard, and um, relatively speaking, depending on who you talk to, it's not as expensive. You'd 100% choose building a PC? Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Although, I mean, now that I have built a couple keyboards... Keep building keyboards is a lot of fun too. Plus I get to chat with you guys. <laughs> if I was building a PC, I'd be way more nervous. You hear me? I think we're back. OBS didn't die. Okay, cool. Um, what was the question? Do I think the rotary encoder is a gimmick? Uh, I bought, I love the look of a rotary encoder. <laughs> I think that's sweet. Do I have a use for it? I mean, if I can get it, if I can reprogram it so that it can manipulate sliders in Adobe Lightroom or manip manipulate color grading when I'm, when I'm editing videos in DaVinci Resolve, then 100% I have a use case for it but I don't know if it can. Do I think factory, oh, Jeff, good question. Do I think factory lube on switches is better than applying my own? Um, I think uh, always applying your own is going to be better than a factory lube. Um, and the reason why is because you can be more meticulous and spend more time actually lubing the uh, switches that you're using. I actually have a, uh, like, I can actually show you in the, in the, when I put the keycaps and switches on this board, what I mean, because these, um, these seal switches, these came factory lubed, but I cleaned them, I cleaned the stems off of all of these and then reapplied my own lube, but I still have a few that are stock. So I'll show you the difference because I think it's different. I, I think it makes a bigger difference from like a feel perspective and a bit of a sound perspective. But if you're lazy or, or uh, lazy is not a good word. If you don't feel like it or if you don't have the means to lube your own switches, then absolutely like a pre-lubed pre one is gonna sound better, but uh, then like nothing at all. But in my opinion, um, I, I also like tinkering with this kind of stuff, right? Like that's <laughs> partly why I have this channel. So, um, I'm going to have, give you a bit of a biased opinion there. So we're on to the last stabilizer for this before we put on the polycarbonate plate and all of the other good stuff. And one comment I've, I've heard is that sometimes the, or well, at least the Bad Seed Tech video was saying that he was having, I think it was the Bad Seed Tech video. One of the videos that I watched about the GMMK Pro was having issues uh, for the um, like aftermarket third party stabilizers fitting to the plate. So we'll see if we run into that problem. Yeah, I would agree with that, Dano. Um, like the factory lube, I mean, it's better than nothing, but it's not the best implementation. And you got to think about it, right? Like when when these are being mass produced, it's just a machine that's doing it, right? And they're just putting a dollop of it kind of where the program says for them to put it. Whereas if you're doing it yourself, you can be you can spend the time to actually lube every surface that you want lubed. You can get the springs dialed into the kind of the... the uh, oiledness that you want to so 
Stock lube in the Duroc Dolphin was oil and 205 grade zero made it better. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Another good example is uh, the Duroc T1s come pre-lubed, but I thought, and I thought like the pre-lubed for them was not bad, but uh, you can always get it a little bit better if you do it yourself. What, Joe, what did you think of the dolphins? Those are the silent switches, right? On a bit of a silent switch kick right now because I really liked those boba gums. I should put the seal switches in? Okay. One vote for seal switches. Oil and rubber dampers make nasty sound. Interesting. Maybe dolphins. I don't know. Like, I, I, I've enjoyed doing the Switch reviews because um, it's fun. Like, again, kind of part of the, going back to the tinkering and fiddling around with things. It's That's exactly what you're doing when you're opening the, the Switches up and playing around, right? But... Part of the reason you got into this hobby is that you can do everything yourself. Yeah. I mean, part of it though, like I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a cop out because some people just simply don't have the means to do to, uh, to like, they don't have the time or they don't have the ability or the means to tune their stuff. Right. So if there is an option for lubed switches, then by all means, I think there should be. But, um, for people who are, I guess you would call them enthusiasts like us, you know, you want to have, oops, I'm flipping the wrong way. You want to have the ability to customize them and tailor them, tailor the switch to what you want, right? And that's not necessarily the case when you have them lubed or it's just a lot more work to like clean everything up, right? So it's always nice to have options. Amen to that. Okay. Oh, you purchased Duroc Palms? Interesting. Okay. Just making sure now that everything is nice and tight. So far, so good. Okay. I'm just gonna test kind of the rattle right now. I know it's not perfect, but you can hear anything really egregious this way, I find. For the most part, it sounds pretty good. There's a little bit of rattle, I think, on just the right side of the enter. So I'm just going to add a bit of bit more lube to that. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Tristan. All right. 
I also opened this up already <laughs> because I was uh, filming this. But here is. The polycarb plate. So, quick, quick show of a quick difference. So here's the polycarb plate, pretty bendy. And then this was the aluminum plate, and that is real stiff in comparison. The polycarb plate does look pretty nice, doesn't it? Let's see if it's going to work, though. <laughs> I see what people were, were meaning by the stabilizers not like aftermarket stabilizers not seating super well into into this because like I don't know if you can see that but that's that's not sitting flush at all oh that's brutal okay let's see here It looks like I can force the stab in place or like I can put the force it around like it's sitting it's sitting better now you can kind of see that in the in the shot I actually got it to sit but I think I am going to use the foam but uh, uh, so so to clarify to clarify here um, the Spacebar is a zeal stab that I used the the bar of the GMMK Pro 4. So that's what's causing the issue, I think. The uh, the GOAT stabs that came with the GMMK Pro are on the backspace, the enter, and the left shift. Those seem to be slotting in okay. It seems like it's aftermarket ones that are, are uh, causing the issue. So... But it doesn't. It, it like it seems like it'll work. Um, but I'm also curious now if the alu plate is gonna give it problems. And it looks like it does. So that's a big, big strike. I think that you have to like shave down your aftermarket stabs to make an alu plate work. Like I don't know. <laughs> there there has got to have been some QC or oversight there or GMMK sneaky trying to be like, hey, just use our stabs. So do with that information what you will, but that's not I'm not that impressed with that. So we're going to put the foam on and then we're going to get these diffusers on as well. Oh, these went like this. Like, yeah, that's, I can make it work, but that's a tight fit. All 
right, and let's use the screws that came with the polycarb plate itself. Yeah, this definitely seems to be a little more fiddly than it needs to be, but. Oh, that's not screwing in properly. Uh, the polycarb screws are a lot sharper on the end. It was focusing there. Um, the other ones, the other ones are just flat, and I think you need the sharp ends to actually screw into the uh, the polycarb housing itself because it's a smaller, it just looks like it's basically like threaded. Or uh, there's been like a pilot hole drilled, basically. So yes, I do think you need them. Duly noted. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of crappy. But yeah, I, I'm I'm just I'm erring on the side of caution and using what they've what they've included. Hey Sam, why the GMMK Pro over the Keychron K K2 V2? Uh, couple of reasons. Um, I think. Well, I mean, for one, I haven't. I I don't really know what's go like the K2 is not one that I'm familiar with. So uh, that's reason one. <laughs> I just I'm not sure what's going on with the K2. Oh, please fit after the fact yes um and i bought the the uh i bought this one for a couple reasons for one i knew it was going to make a good youtube video because regardless of the whether you think this is an awesome board or you know shameless like you know really not meeting the expectations of what everybody said people were going to look at this this keyboard and people were going to want to talk about this keyboard. So that was another big reason for it was I just thought it would be a good uh, keyboard to review and 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 show on the channel. And uh, the Keychron K2 V2 is not one that I have uh, I've heard of yet. So Welcome back, germophobic. Do I have the same music on uh, I have a little playlist of the license-free music that I've used in previous videos, yeah. So there might be some repeats. Can't really play the music I would prefer to play on stream uh, because I would get taken down. Oh yeah, no, I didn't take that as a critique or anything like that, Sam. Um, I just don't know. I, I'd love to review, like the Keychron, one of the Keychron K8 video that I that I did back in October is one of the best video, like the best received videos I have on my channel. So Keychron definitely does stuff right. And I would be super down to try it in the future. What do I like uh, in terms of music? 
I am a big metal guy. Metal and chill ambient, <laughs> generally. So I also have the option here, Kiss. <laughs> Kiss is not what I would consider metal music, germaphobic. I'm very curious to see if there's going to be some interference with the way that these the space bar is sitting because I've kind of had to push it down. I'm also shopping for keycaps. I really, really want SA. SA looks pretty cool. Um, I, I, I don't have experience with SA. Um, I've, I've heard it's really nice for typing, but for, from a, like, I've heard the same thing from a gaming perspective. It, it can be kind of sus probably depends on the types of games you're playing. Right. So, um, I think, I think if it was a, sh like if, if you were playing a lot more shooters, I would opt for, um, like cherry or OEM profile because those are just lower profile is probably better for that, but. What kind of games do you play, though, Germaphobic? CSGO Boy? Uh, what mods are am, am I adding to this? So uh, I'm putting on the polycarbonate plate, which is what you're seeing right now, which is turning out pretty nice so far. Um, I'm putting on the polycarbonate plate. I have cleaned off each one of these stabilizers here and then lubed them. And then I swapped the space bar for a zeal stabilizer instead of the goat because I've heard the goat ones are not bad for uh, the smaller modifiers, but for the space bar, you want something a little bit different. Plus that's all I had on hand. <laughs> CS go, hey. I am hot, hot garbage at uh, CS go, so I do not indulge. Oops. <clears throat> Just normality. Thinking about getting some keycaps. Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your poison? Oh shit. I think an adult. Yeah, that's a nice looking set. The problem with keycaps is all of the ones that are currently for sale, like on group buy, you're like, oh man, those look great. I'm totally gonna put those on my board. And then you order them and it's like estimated shipping time, November, 2021. And you're like, well, crap. Oh, shit. I mean, Sam, I also think it's probably just ultimately comes down to personal preference too. Like, you, I, I'm sure anybody could get used to a particular profile, right?
Okay, <laughs> I think we have put everything together. That was a lot of screws, holy crap. Just make sure that I didn't miss any now. Let's put this guy back together here and actually get a typing test. Shall we? Getting some Bowen on one side. I just want to make sure that this is getting seated properly. You're going to mod your GMMK TKL. What do you recommend as mods? Uh, definitely mod your stabilizers. That would be my big recommendation. Why, 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 why are you being so awkward? Wow, you really have to get this um, in order to prevent there in, to be bowing, like any sort of bowing or flex in this PCB when you're putting it back into the uh, bottom housing. You really have to push this, that cable that you see there that connects to the, the daughter board. You really need to push that into the little gap or else you get this like crazy bowing and it doesn't sit nice. So food for thought, when you are putting this together, make sure that you do that. Oh, come on. You guys see that? <laughs> it's bowing so much. Oh gosh. Why are we doing that?
Okay, I think we got there. Yeah, it was Boeing. I don't know what's going... Like, maybe I did the... It, I wonder... I, again, I wonder if it has to do with the fact that I have this aftermarket stabilizer in. I can't imagine it would affect it that much, but... I need to cut material... No, there's a, there's a channel right underneath that's cut into the actual case. Sorry, I missed the question. Ooh. think it's the plate yeah I think it's the plate too I mean we shall see if I totally if I just bunged a $175 US keyboard no there was foam at the on the bottom plate too uh, Joe just uh, there was a cutout for the foam and then there was a cutout for the for the uh, daughter board but it seems to be going threading better now so Oop. I'm just gonna chalk it up maybe as a issue like a little error but we'll see we'll see this can be a live stream fail if it doesn't work <laughs> Sorry, germaphobe, you're offering me music? You make jazz music? You think a lot of YouTube reviewers overhype the GMMK Pro? Um, I think the GMMK Pro, I think GMMK overhyped the GMMK Pro, if you ask me. But like it or not, it was good marketing because a lot of people are talking about it, right? Well, here it is with the polycarb plate. It's definitely flexier. Right, we'll put this on now. Okay. Oops, switch time. I appreciate that germophobic. Maybe we'll talk about that after the stream. Okay. I know I had Dano say do the seal switches, but I do have the uh, box royals as well. Or sorry, box navies. My goodness, I'm having brain farts right now. Is it EPBT Kuroshiro? No, it's uh, EPBT Gray Japanese on the key. Not Kuroshiro. I'm gonna put uh, seal switches in here because I've really wanted to try linears with a polycarb plate. Plus, I just think the white on white or the white on silver are gonna look pretty nice. Navies are a heavier jade, yeah. You would like box navies in the arrow cluster. Okay, just for you, Victor, just for you. funny my girlfriend has called these these uh box navies uh relationship killers <laughs> they are so loud oops what am i using now um for switches 
like in, in my other keyboards. I am using uh, Gazoo Boba Gum silent switches in this keyboard and I spring swap them for 70 grams, which they used to be uh, 52 grams. And then my Maja has uh, Telios uh, at a 67 gram weight that I've all, you know, done the lube filming, so on and so forth. Heck yeah, box navies. <laughs> What's the actuation on the force of the I think it's something crazy like 90 grams. That might be the bottom out force, but I could be wrong. It's thick. Like ridiculously thick. Like just listen to this. This is listen to this switch right now. Well, I'll turn the music off for a second. nuts don't quote me on that don't quote me on the 90 but i'm pretty sure it's something like that <laughs> go to bed sam i really appreciate you toughing it out though that's that's late in the uk Hey, Nakano, I am putting in seal linear switches right now into the board, and these are uh, box navies. Yeah, I guess you got to stay for the sound test now, right? You've been up for long enough. The other nice thing about the uh, GMMK Pro that I'm not like that that uh, I really appreciate is that they are south facing LEDs, not north facing, so you don't get any of the potential interference issues with different keycaps and things like that. So that was nice thought by by GMMK to make sure that that was the case. GMK Shoto. I'm not familiar with GMK Shoto. I think any sort of lighter profile keycap set would look really good on this board just because, you know, white. Like um, the gray, I was thinking about putting just EPBT gray English, the one on my Maja, but I didn't want to take the Maja apart. Oh, no. Maybe it's just your phone or it looks kind of blue. Um, the seal switches are a little bit blue and uh, the gr this gray this gray desk mat can kind of look a little bit blue. But uh, the, the board itself is very silver. North Face should be illegal. <laughs> Oops. Now, the other thing that um, my box came with when I opened it was that I needed to download the GMMK software before plugging the board in. So before we, uh, <laughs> b 
before we actually hook this thing up, I'm going to do that. Because I don't want to brick this. What desk mat is this? Uh, this is the uh, gray circles from GMK Modern Dolch 2, I believe. I bought this a long time ago. And I, uh, I put an order on this, I think, in July. And it came like three weeks ago. So it's been a while. Okay, keycaps. God, I am running out of space. Keycaps. Hey, <laughs> yeah, Alexa, remind me. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. I think I, uh, there's enough people on stream to be like, "Hey, Patrick, don't don't do this until you do." And just for the folks at home, box royals on the arrow cluster, or goddamn box navies. Hennessy. Hennessy would look good. Okay, let's put some keycaps on. Ooh, it's sounding sounding pretty good already. Sounding pretty good already. What keycaps were these? These are EPBT Notion by Novel Keys or BIP and Novel Keys. You can buy them on at Novel Keys. I think they look pretty nice. I need a uh, short shift. What constitutes shift on this keycap set? This, okay. Yeah, I like PBT um, because they're usually pretty easy to find and I like the texture quite a bit. Trying to set up the glory. Okay. Yeah, let me know how those go, Cajun. Um, I saw somebody on uh, in a in a group chat that I follow or that uh, I'm a part of bought the GPBT set as well and saw some legending issues, like where some of the legends were printed thicker on than others. But from like a usage perspective, I think he was still happy with how they were. But one thing to keep an eye out for, I would say. Do I have a fun backspace color to use? No. Okay. Backspace, where are you? I'm going to use some fun colors now. Let's do that one for the shift. Thanks, Dano. Can you guys hear that? Didn't realize my mic was that sensitive. Yeah, it's it's better than it's definitely better than what it was before. <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah i definitely need to add more music to this this royalty free playlist <laughs> i think this is like the third or fourth time since i started streaming that this song has come up <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for coming, Just Normality. Appreciate you uh, you sticking around to watch. Yeah, they do have ISO. Look at that. I forgot about that for the for them Europeans out there. Thanks, Normality. Have a good one. Yeah, Sam. Like, if you're in the market for like a rel reasonably priced keycap set, definitely. Definitely look into the EPBT or the PBT stuff on novel keys. Also, um, the KB defense EPBT stuff is pretty good too. So, typing test is coming. I just need to finish putting the things on the thing. What switches am I using for this build? I am using. Uh, Seal switches by Minterly. They are a JWK made switch, I believe. I want to say. And um, it's a collab by like another creator named Minterly. And the uh, spring weight on these is 78 grams. So it's super heavy. But um, it's basically, as I understand, it's the same mold as the alpaca housings, which uh, are nice, apparently. I like them quite a bit. Bro, yeah, I might have to change my pan. <laughs> Guess I did a good job. They are heavy, but uh, uh, but after lubing, they feel real nice. Do I think GMMK should have added support for stepped caps lock? I mean, show me a hot swap board that has stepped caps lock support. And for those who are wondering, stepped caps lock is this one here, where there's literally a little step. Uh, the problem, oops, the problem with them is that this this um, the pin or the uh, the entry for the switch is offset further to the left, not centered like on these ones. And um, I don't know, like I I don't think um, I don't think it was unreasonable for GMMK not to offer stepped caps lock because I don't know of any hot swap boards that do. And I would imagine that would add a lot of cost to the manufacturing of the board just to have that type of feature. All right, have a good dinner, germaphobic. All right, continuing with the fun, funky color scheme. I need the smaller ones for the. Of your 10 boards, you have zero. Could I press the keys real quick? Here, here. <laughs> There, you can go to bed now, Sam. <laughs> I did not spring swap. Thanks, germaphobic. Have a good night. Uh, uh, Dano, I did not spring swap. They are 78 grams because uh, 
I like I like him heavy, I guess. All right. Uh, so for this row, I need some switches or not some switches. I need some things. Let's go with that. That. I don't know, something like that. You want to hear the box navies? <laughs> All right. Here you go. are loud the audacity <laughs> how dare they be so loud all right I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit here so I have some more space have I heard of the Everglide Water Kings? I have, and they look amazing, and I'd love to get my hands on a, on a few, but uh, I just have not gotten a chance yet to acquire them. Okay, so before we continue, I am going to get the GMMK software because I needed to be reminded of that. So bear with me here. All right. Huh, there's different software for different boards. Okay, so I need GMMK keyboard editor 717. Uh, what did I just build? What is this called? A uh, pro. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Have a good night. Uh, what's the black case? This is a KBD fan, 60% case. Uh, starts with... One, two, one, zero, three. Okay, well... I'm a little bit worried now. I can't find the software to download. Is it called Glorious Core? Yeah, the problem is, oh, here we go. Oh, Cajun Canuck, you are, you are a lifesaver. Uh, it's a, uh, oh, thanks, Victor. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Like they were like, yeah, for day one, you need to you need to download this software. And I was like, okay. I saw Brandon Taylor. I think almost bricked his because he didn't. So I makes me nervous. So better be safe than sorry. Before I plug this thing in. I accept. All right, we're almost there. We are almost there. But yeah, while this is installing, here's the build. Here's what it looks like all put together. I have to say I really do like these keycaps on the white on the white case. I think that looks really clean. Okay, well, I'll, I'm going to show uh, my screen here. Please connect your glorious product. Well, let's find out. Okay, lights have turned on. That's good. GMMK Pro is set up and ready to go. Ah, oh, look at that. I recognized it. Nice. Hey, Yulilicious, good to see you. Um, this build went pretty well. There was some weird things going on with the plate, and uh, it's definitely not designed for third-party stabs yet, which is a little bit disappointing, but yeah, we got there. Um, the colored set is the PBT Notion uh, Cajun Canuck, and uh, you can get it on Novel Keys. Okay, let's go to my favorite keyboard. Actually, let's just use V. Let's use V uh, here for this piece. And let's see if everything works. Okay, so three is not seated properly. That's good to know. Neither is spacebar. And neither is right window. I'm not used to having an Efro. This is kind of nice. Okay, so I need to fix a couple things. Uh, oh, currently the key binding for the rotary encoder is volume up and volume down, and pushing it is mute. But uh, before before I get to fiddling around with that, let me um, let me make sure the switches are seated properly. Oh yeah, that's flat. Switches are, um, so keycaps are, I need to get, I, I understand now why streamers have that like exclamation mark keyboard uh, because uh, answering this several times over the course of a stream, I can understand now, makes sense. Um, the switches are uh, seal switches by Minterly the keycap set is EPB or is PBT Notion from Novel Keys. Okay, and then right windows was the other one that was a problem. That looks fine though. Do I have a dead switch? Perhaps. Let's find out. Hmm. Uh, 
All right, so right windows doesn't seem to be working, but um, I will diagnose that later. It could just be a contact a contact issue on the on the hot swap, but should probably fairly easy to fix. Let's get a quick weigh in now that it is fully built, just to see where it sort of stacks up as well. So 3.6 pounds fully built, which is like significantly heavier than your your standard pre-built. But um, in terms of in terms of like other keyboards I have kicking around, it's about the same weight. So move this out of the way. But yeah, here we go. The useless key. Yeah, it's not one that I ever use, but it be nice to make to have it work but all right let's uh let's do a typing test shall we okay let's kill the music and I'm going to move my mic now and we'll see how this bad boy sounds. Okay, so this is the GMMK Pro in white ice, which is really silver. The keycaps are, e, are PBT Notion by BIP and Novel Keys. The switches are seal switches for everything here, and then the arrow cluster are box navies. And uh, I have the polycarbonate plate on this, and I've kept the foam in, and uh, every screw has been installed. So here's how it sounds. And the box roy or uh, box uh, navies. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, Justin, hey, the. Uh, Yes, the switches were lubed and filmed, lubed with Crytox 205 grade zero and filmed with uh, desk keys switch films. And uh, no, I didn't film the, the jades though. These are, or sorry, the navies. They're just clicky as clicky can be. Excuse me. So not bad. Like, I mean, my, my initial impressions are, I really hope that my right windows button works because I haven't done like this is the first time i've used this keyboard it'd be nice it'd be nice to to make th to make it work um but you know the sound is the sound isn't quite as deep 
I would say, as like some of your other keyboards out there. But I mean, like for the price and for the availability that it's supposedly going to have, uh, I think it's great. Like my first impressions are really excellent. Like I, I'm going to need some more time to play around with it, certainly, and, and have some more time with it on my desk to make sure that it's it's legit. But like as a quick example, let me bring the Maja over and it, because I, I have linear switches in it as well. And you can kind of hear the difference. <laughs> Chill, you asked my favorite keyboard content creator. Uh, there are quite a bit. Um, I really like Hippio Tech. He's been super helpful with like being able to broadcast this channel as well. So I really appreciate him for that. Um, I mean, Hippio Tech, Hamaji Neo are great. Galarsis, I think, is the funniest key content creator out there. And like JYMV for like a total breakdown on everything that you could possibly want to know about a keyboard. He's he's incredible at doing that. But I mean, there are so many good content creators on the on the platform now, and you know, it's just it's it's nice to have that to be able to watch and and get ideas from what they're doing and things like that. So yeah, it's been it's been great. Okay, so this is what I mean by uh, like the thock sound i suppose versus the two so i'm going to bring my mic over the um the maja has uh, uh telios 67 gram that were also lubed and filmed this has a brass plate and uh versus a polycarb plate so this is going to be kind of thicker or, or stiffer um but i do think that this sounds better but here you go Yeah, so it's just, I think, you know, like I said, this, the price difference between these two keyboards is also incredibly significant. So it's not like, it's hard to compare these two because this is $329 US and this was 170 right? So um, not quite the same comparison to be made, but does give you an idea like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't the best sounding board I've ever tried, but my goodness the for the price it's great so put this back now oh was hippio watching my video about the boba gum that's sweet um yeah Cajun, I'd love to, like, I am going to take this apart again. I mean, I got a video to film now. So this is just sort of a first impressions, general vibe uh, video build stream. Like, I'm, I'm going to do a full on, you know, tear down kind of the same sort of videos that you've normally seen me make on the channel. So I'll probably do that in the next couple of weeks because I'm going to, this is going to sit on my desk for a good two weeks, I think, um, to really get the get my impressions of it out of the way but like right away i think it's i mean it looks great on this on this mat too like the gray on gray but um yeah i'm i'm curious as well to see if this holds up and and like i said i have some good comparisons to sort of draw from with the ido bow so yeah we'll see but yeah first impressions are are are, are very positive i think all things considered so well, that's kind of all I wanted to do today. Like I, I you know, I, I don't really, unfortunately, I don't really have time to like pull this whole thing apart again and put this plate on again. But um, I think 
maybe in the future I'll do a video or, or maybe I'll do a live stream where I'll go through via and play around with it. Or to be honest, it might just end up as something that I talk about in, in the video that I put together just cause time and things like that. It's, it's, it's a little bit harder for me to, to find time to do stuff like that these days, but, um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream. I, like I said, I think, uh, she's pretty nice. She's pretty nice. I'll turn off all the, I'll do, I'll pull a, a, a Taiha and I'll remove all of my things here. Oops. Make this bigger so I can get a screenshot for the live stream. Boom. There we go. Did I try the stabs? Did I try the stabs on the aluminum plate? I did. Um, at the very beginning of the stream, I just threw some switches in here and put the and and uh, put the modifiers on, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't amazing. It was pretty rattly. But I mean, any any keyboard out of the box isn't going to have the best stabilizers in the world. So, hey, no problem, Tristan. Glad that you could uh, hang out and watch with me. I think uh, there will be many a game of Warzone played on this for the next little bit. So. Um, but yeah, I, I think maybe I'll, I'll hold, a, I'll hold on for the next minute or so if there's any other questions, but, uh, if not, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sign off and start making the video. Hey, no worries. Thanks for thanks for hopping on, everyone. I think I hit uh, I think I hit a new record for people attending the stream. So really appreciate that. This has been great. So, oh, good to know, Chilled. I'll, I'll have a look at that video. It's been a while since I've I've watched a few of the Hippio ones. I watched this KL ninety one, and oh god, that KL ninety is such a nice looking keyboard. So one of these days, but. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up from there. But uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for spending a couple hours with me there, fellas. And uh, yeah, take it easy, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. So, peace.